Hi, and welcome to another edition of IUE Mag TV. We're your host, Adrian Wallace. And Amy Lease. Today's show focuses on college life, so let's take a look around campus and see what students around here face and at all other colleges. We'll also have an interview from our very absent minded professor, Dr. Jerome Mahaffey. First is the danger of predators. We've been hearing lately that there is a pool hustler stalking Springwood Hall, and Adrian out with a hidden video crew to find this person. Uh, we did find something, and we'll let you be the judge. Let's roll the clip. Anybody can get to the Play again? Sure. Come in. Can I would make a little wager on it this time? How much it costs? Uh, let's go with 20 bucks. Dollars. I'll take $20, your shoes, your pride, and your life, it don't matter. I think she cheated somehow. I don't know. I don't know how, it, like, she would hit one ball and, like, six of them went in. It didn't make no freaking sense. I think she was tilting the table. Do you think this was our hustler, or is there someone else we should be aware of? That definitely had to be the hustler. I've never been beat by a female, and that was the first time, I think, in the past month that I've been beaten, and that was just horrific. Okay, well, we'll come back to the pool part, but uh, let's follow another one of our colleagues as he tries to get registered, advised, and pay for his courses. Roll that clip. Do you know where I'm going to register for classes? Yeah. Okay, we'll look at these here. Okay. Alright. 
Okay. Well, you did not make the March 1st deadline. So you want demel these. And you demel only two copies of them with it. Okay. Anything else I help you with? No, I think that's about it. You know where the Bursar office is? Sure, no problem. Go ahead and take a the left, go down the hallway, take a right, go down the middle of the hallway, you see some chairs, go up those stairs, go to the top of the stairs, take a left, go down there, you see some offices, go down there, and take the steps down and around, take a left, and come around that and take a right, and Bursar's office right there. Okay. You need a stamp for that? No. Okay. I got it. Thank you. Hi, I'm here to check the balance of my account. I'm sorry, but our system is down right now. We'll have to come back a little later. <laughs> that sounds about right. It took me like seven years to sign up for one semester of class. I can't believe that there are actually people that work here that wouldn't be that much help to that student. That's awful. Oh, well, you can see that they're exaggerating just a little bit on that one. But for those of you who are wondering how actually to get into college, we have another clip. Website you go to, and you're welcome to come in here. We have a person that forgot to. Do you want 
you have any questions? No. Okay. That's pretty much your packet. Um, I'm looking for an advisor to help me select um, classes for the fall semester. is closer to the truth. I think it's a little bit of a cross of both. I mean, the second clip is what actually is supposed to happen, and the first one was kind of some of the things that actually do happen. <laughs> okay, now it's time to move on to our favorite part of the show, Just Ask James. James, we all know you're a geek. You know a lot of stuff about computers, but what do you know about, like, stuff with common sense and, and everyday life? What actually are other modes of transportation around town? Thank you, Adrian. You know, today, it's really not a technical question today. It's more, um, it's pure fun. I'm going to show you some different forms of transportation, and at least one that you can see. And uh, as you see behind me, I'm going to take off my walk. It's a, it's a walk-run combination. It's a slow walk and a real slow run. So I, I live in Lynn, and I'm going to go through Fount City, and then I'm going to go through Ellen to Richmond and I East, and let's go. So I'm walking, and as you can tell, I have a little, little bit of an escort. They like following me around. And they follow me around back here, and they kind of telegate me too. So I'll up here, let's look. Okay, I'm going. Make a turn. Here we go. Okay, I'm just going to walk through here. The speed limit's you know, a little bit slower than what I'm used to. Well, there's no, really no way to go. Um, we're going through this way uh, approximately you know, 12 miles, so I'm going to keep at the steady pace. Okay, here we go. And sometimes, you know, I, I, I like to do different things. I'm walking, I'm talking to the phone and say, hey, what's up? How are you doing? And, yeah, I'll be at school in a few minutes. A couple minutes, I'll be there. So I'm heading down. It's really nice out today. It's kind of windy here. But... Okay, you see the cars going past here. We're getting close. So. But I'm not doing bad, too bad time today. Okay. I bring it 
needs to be done because uh, it's almost time for school. Okay, we're out of town. Let's go. Still kicking. Okay, that's a good room. Until next time, back to Amy and Adrian. <laughs> James thinks he knows everything. Nice try, James. There are a few more, but you were close. <laughs> Finally, we wanted to know what you did over spring break. So we sent on a crew to see what we could find. <laughs> As you'll see, <laughs> some of you are not who you really thought you were when everything happened and all the summer time came out and everything. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Um, I went to Seattle, actually. And I went to the University of Washington where we protested the war. And we were tear gas. And uh, there was about 10,000 people there. And then uh, I went shopping. And... Uh, Went to this really cool goth club where everyone dresses in, um, you know, goth clothes and whips and chains. And there was somebody in the back room getting flogged at the time. And um, let's see, what else did I do? We went walking around here, and um, actually they were having like a revival of these old '80s groups, and the Go Go's were there. Yeah, and um, they tried to get ABBA, but they wouldn't get back together or anything. <laughs> To, oh, we went down and protested in front of um, Fort Lewis in Tacoma and uh, got arrested. And uh, of course, they just let us go after that. Because, um, you know, we were on public property. So. Um, other than that, um, got a, I got another tattoo and um, got into a bar fight. His name was Bruce, and it was at the goth club because the guys there dress up as, as women. So, and that's all. Isn't that Myrtle Beach? All I did, I uh, uh, went on a golf trip through IU East, went to Myrtle Beach, played golf for three days, came back on Tuesday. After that, I sat around the house, slept in a lot, saved up all my sleep, did a little work here and there, but basically just hung out the whole week. Had a good time. I went to Ireland. It was the longest flight in the god gosh darn world. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was raining when I got there and it stopped. But then I got into the little town of Dublin and 
left. Got a little room. Met a great guy. He's over there though. I didn't want to bring him over. And then the house I went to. He had teeth. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bars are everywhere there. Pubs. And that was all. Obviously, not a lot of people went anywhere. I guess. I guess that one girl that went to Germany, she kind of went to someplace interesting overseas. Yeah, and she was proud. Of the, the They're not letting anybody teeth. go overseas right now. I don't think, right? Yeah. Hey, at least the guy she met had teeth. That's all that matters. Let's go to Linda and the absent-minded professor. In your first uh, TV production class, can you tell us about your students? Well, we have about every kind of animal that you can imagine. We have a African frog, an African albino frog. We have three cats and one of them will not let you touch her. She's stuck in uh, premenstrual syndrome, I think, since we had her spayed. We have two dogs that are not good for much of anything. We have the um, number one big black dog that will bark very loud and then run away. And we have the small dog that will just come up and lick any intruders. Uh, we have, what else, uh, numerous fish in a fish tank. Uh, we also have chickens. We have five chickens that are living in my workshop right now. And it seems like we have a parakeet. Yeah, we've got a parakeet there. That about covers it. If you could pick your dream production crew, who would it be and why? Well, my wife and two children. Uh, her name is Lainey. Our kids are a 10-year-old boy. No, I'm sorry. He's 11 now. 10-year-old boy. No, I'm sorry. He's 11 now. 10-year-old boy. No, I'm sorry. He's 11 now. Named Isaac. And my daughter is 8 years old. Her name is Anna. And uh, my son is somewhat melancholic and gets really excited about certain things and is a deep thinker and likes to talk about number one big black dog that will bark very loud and then run away. And my daughter is has a very sanguine personality and is not camera shy whatsoever and just loves to have fun and loves to catch frogs and lizards and snakes. Um, my wife and I have been married for about 15 years and um, I ask her periodically how well is our relationship doing and she keeps telling me it's doing pretty well so I take her word on that. My wife's a poet and she uh, loves children and uh, loves to talk to people about their problems. You've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different kinds of equipment over the years since you've been doing this for quite a while. What kind of equipment have you used in the past? Well, I haven't done any formal paintings in quite a long time, but I like to paint with acrylics and brushes mostly. Uh, I use a, a wide brush and a couple of small brushes and then the smallest brush I can get. I like to water the paint down and put it on pretty thin. I paint on canvas, although I'm not opposed to painting on masonite. And then I, I like to build my own frames and uh, frame the paintings. Concern over excessive commercialism during children's shows prompted a 1990 law, the Children's Television Act, that limited stations to 12 minutes of commercials per hour I on weekdays and created guidelines for educational program for kids. Delivery methods for the expanded channel systems include broadcast, high power satellites, telephone, standard and digital cable, or fiber optic technology. Large, flat screen, high resolution digital teleprompters, teleputers, will be the machine of choice to receive programs from traditional television sources and to download files from the World Wide Web in the future. But whether television is an intellectual wasteland that makes people ignorant, more violent, and more prone to stereotype individuals or a window on the world that educates and informs people, broadening their horizons and empowering them as citizens will always be debated. Well, of course. So why do you think uh, professors are absent-minded? I believe there are some practical reasons why professors seem to be absent-minded. It's not all a myth. And part of that is that our, our brains get so full that there's just not room for anything else. And you try to add some more information into my brain just at any time during the semester. And if the brain's full, whatever you add just displaces something else. And it slips out. We, I tend to live in the moment. And I can remember things going on 
immediately but have trouble remembering things that may have happened just a couple of hours ago or the other day. Uh, Long-term memory works pretty well. Uh, I can always remember those obscure facts and those boring stories that you hear in lectures, but it's the day-to-day -day stuff that just keeps getting displaced by something else, shoving it out of the way because uh, we lead such busy lives and often are working on profound and deep research and just have little room in our brains to put anything else. So tell us uh, some examples of your own absent-minded behavior. Well, the other day I was driving to school and I was sitting at uh, on Industries Road at Chester waiting for the light to turn and so I could turn left and come on into the school and uh, pondering professorial type things. And somebody started honking their horn behind me and I looked around and then I looked up and the light was green so I put it into gear and I went. Later that day, I think it was the same day, I can't remember, I checked my telephone about lunchtime to see if there were any messages, and there was a message from uh, Karen on my machine, and I was playing the message back, and I thought to myself, I know this voice, I think I know this person, but who is this? I just couldn't place them, and uh, the message was from Karen, our secretary, who's in the office right around the corner from me. I often go into a room or go to do something and I get there and I forgot, I've entirely forgotten what I went to do. And uh, literally, I'll stand there and think for a minute and try to remember what it was, or I'll start looking around the room to try to f see what I was looking for if I went to get something, sometimes that works. Other times I've got to go back to where I started and retrace trace my steps and then my line of thought will come back to me depending on the place where I'm Ad or what I was touching or holding, and then I'll often remember what it was, and then I can try to hold that thought and go back to the room and get what it was I went to get. Thank you, Linda and Dr. Mahaffey. Now we know a little bit more about our fearless professor. <laughs> uh, well, let's as, just go ahead and go with your quote before you start ranting. As friend Lear was said, great people talk about ideas, average people talk about things, that small people talk about wine. Alcohol is always you great. You know what, Adrian? Why do you always think that your quotes are the best? I mean, I have great quotes, too, and I just happen to have them with me. What What'd you do? Write a book and come in? <laughs> Go on, let me hear what you got. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Snore and you sleep alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or remember what Victor Hugo said. I don't mind what Congress does as long as they don't do it in the streets and frighten the horses. <laughs> that was a good one, well, wasn't it? The nice thing about being a celebrity is what you, what you do when you bore people. They think it's their fault, as Henry Kissinger said. Or in the words of a famous celebrity, Lily Tomlin, I always wanted to be somebody, but I should have been more specific. Yeah, you really should have been. Well, how about what... Eric Hofer said, when people are free to do as they please, they usually imitate each other. <laughs> well, that's our show for this week. So until next time, have fun, be safe, and until next time, whatever, man! You're watching Whitewater Educational Television, Cable 20, a service of Whitewater Community Television.